All right, I got something to show you. Um, as you see from the title, it's got something very important to show you. Okay, now as they say, uh, if you're up on a house, you can't see every part of the house. You know, if you're up on the west wing, all you can see a part of the west side of the house. If you're on the east side of the house or east, east wing of the house, all you can see is that part of the house. But if you're in front of the house and you're up close on it, all you can see is that front part of the house. So what they tell you to do, step back a little bit, like a coach, like a football coach or whatever. I'm not into sports anymore, but just mindset. Just think of your mindset. As you, you're a coach, basketball coach, baseball, football, you're never in the, in the middle of the play of the field so you can have a, a better view of everything. You're actually going to be in a standpoint to where you can make adjustments. And so you step back a bit so you're not rushing in the middle of everything. So you have to, you have, you have, you have able to have time to actually think and um, put things together. So step back away from the house for a bit. All right. So I'm going to show you something that you've never seen or paid attention to that I'm going to put together. All right. It's not I'm not reaching for nothing. Everything I'm going to say is all facts. All right. Peace. Watch this. You know, a lot of them feel me if you're not as the East Coast anymore. That's so nonsense. Poppycock. <laughs> This is not a new allegiance to the West Coast. I've been on the West Coast all this time. It's just because some people, not all, right. some people on the East Coast be on their dick so hard that they never heard me say that I'm living on the West Coast. Right. It's just that by me keeping it real, I always said where I came from. I always gave me your big props. On Me Against the World, I took a whole song to give it up. So now the next album, when I want to give it up, my home, where I'm at, Everybody got a problem? Why didn't we have no problem with Biggie saying Brooklyn in the house every fucking show he do? Why didn't I have a problem with Bronx and Boone? They just did a Sprite commercial up um, the bridge and KRS. But what, why is it not hip hop when I do it? Well, I mean, goddamn. Why is it suddenly a nigga tripping when I do it? Why everybody else could have a war, have beef within the music, talk about differences, and it's okay as music, as hip hop, is groundbreaking. When I do it, it's war. <laughs> And that's all I'm doing. All I'm okay, two, two, two. Now I'm going to show you something. Now you see this woman in the background right behind him. Woman in all dark, clo no clothing on right behind him, right? Now where have you seen this before? I was like, when I was sitting here, like, like man, I've seen this somewhere. I, I kept seeing it somewhere. And looking at the house, I'm like, the, the inside of this house, white, white and black, white and black. He's got on white and black. His house is white and black. I'm like, wait a minute. Something about this is, is very familiar. So I said, oh, I know why I seen this shit at. We was doing it like hip hop was one nation. And I have proof to say what, what I was doing. I did more for the East Coast than the East Coast did. I put more guns in East Coast niggas' hands than East Coast niggas did when they came out here. I put the niggas on the more weed gates and weed spots and safe papers and safe spots than the East Coast did. I put more rappers on than they did. I gave Biggie his first shows. I was the... So now you see it fully. The the dark goddess pretty much you can say Tiamat, Newt, whoever you want to say. I'm just going to put it together for you. So you see how she's uh, bent back, right? With no clothes on, right? Now peep this. We went straight to Tommy's house afterwards out in Jamaica Estates just to cool out for a minute. I mean, I love this nigga's crib, man. It always reminded me of what I wanted to have eventually. Yo. All right, so that's Nas talking, right? He said, I love this nigga crib. Remember, before Tupac passed, Tupac and Nas were having wor uh, words with each other back and forth. They did not really, uh, Tupac was saying that uh, he had took uh, Rock Kim style. You know, how you like, you, you, uh, you read about my, my life in the papers. Uh, you heard about my, you read about my life in the papers. You know what I'm saying? And that, that song, me, um, not me against the world, but his last album, the last song, uh, he was talking about he was ready for war. But like it's crazy. This this movie came out 
in like early 2000, 1999, right? Around that time. And so he's long, he's long, he's, he's passed, his physical, he left his physical body in 1996, Tupac did. So he said, I've always liked his career. Remember the, the Vibe uh, interview was like what, right after um, All Eyes On Me came out in 1995. He said, I always liked this nigga crib. Always liked his crib. Like he said, you you read about my life in the papers. He said, he said you took took five shots like me. And like, come on, like now you gotta put it together. Now people don't even realize Nas wrote uh, helped write this movie, or he wrote this movie. I believe I can look at the credits once I get through at the end of the video. I can pull up the credits and I'll show you. But the thing is, he wrote this vid, like this part, like some of his rhymes or raps you can see inside the movie, like. um uh, not Illmatic, but the one after that. Um, uh, the second Nas album, he had like some scenes he was rapping about that was actually in his movie. All right, so I'm going to play it for you so you can see Tommy's house, which is actually Tupac's house. You see it in, in here, black and white. They got on black and white. Remember, Tupac had on black and white in the Vibe interview. Here we go. A fat new crib like his shit, one day. Niggas wild with me in there. Boom, there it goes. I told you, remember the woman? When he uh, when to, right, was right was sitting behind Tupac, right? The woman had that was leaning back and her head was all the way back, but they have her head sitting straight up on this video, this part. Then you're going to see they, they all have on black and white. The house is black and white. Now you see, same shit, but it's, it's, got a, it's, not, it's not far fetched at all. And remember how Tommy is acting. Remember, he got the bald head and how Tupac was, um, how was, he was reacting to the questions. He had a lot of energy in his question. He's an energetic person. Three six nine just passed, um, or six three nine, however you want to call it. But he is very energetic person, energetic person. But I'm I've never like DMX. He is an energetic person, but at times like I, I wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't be like that. He was more calm at times, and then, like you know, that just was offsetting to me. Like he was like the bald head and the whole black and white thing. I'm like, and I looked at it one day. I'm like, I have seen this before. When I was watching a vibe interview one time, I, I was just sitting. There, I said, there it goes. They use his vibe interview and made Tommy's crib out of it. It's crazy. He said, I always wanted a crib like his. He said, You took five shots. He said, You took five shots. And like, you read about my life in the papers. I'm like, That's crazy. Now, I mean, son. Boom. Now he's, he's they got the woman behind him, just like Tupac. So he's sitting in front of the woman. So, like, remember, Hype Williams doing a video doing the movie for this. You know, the cinematography is exact on. People was like, when it, when it came out, I was like, oh, it reminds me of a, a long music video. I'm like, no, you just don't understand cinematography, the way he framed everything and shot it. If it was Martin Scorsese, you'd be all like, oh, my goodness. Or, or this person deserves a deserves to get an a Oscar for for cinematography. But the way he, he filmed and he... um. He posed and also uh, framed everything. I, I I do I did this stuff and still can do stuff in video. Uh, I, I was the cameraman and he does. He had a perfect eye for the shit. But like Nas, he was a writer on this movie, so he put a lot of his stories into this. So remember the part when he was sitting on the bench with the kid. He said, "Shorty, uh, that was that was a part of his rhymes he had." It, that's what it's called. The, the the album was called "It Was Written," the second album. It almost slipped my mind. But as you see, Nas is sitting in front of a woman, just like Tupac was sitting in front of the woman. Bro, kid, yeah, check this shit out. Up against the motherfucking glass and all that shit. So as you can see, you know, that's where I got this this whole situation from. I, I seen it and it came to me. But I'm gonna give you another part. Okay, I'm looking at the, the uh, I went up and down on the credits for this movie, Belly, 
it doesn't show anybody who wrote the film. I've never seen a movie like that where they never show who wrote who wrote a film who wrote the film. All I see is script supervisor by Andrea Crawford. Script supervisor by Andrea Crawford. Everything else is like grip, uh, lighting, uh, special effects or a uh, location. Um, uh, these are loaders, camera people. That said, uh, Little X was one of the people that was working. He's, he used to work under um, Hype Williams, of course. But uh, like other than that, this is the only only person that shows that did a, did a script for this. So they wanted to keep whoever wrote this film out of. So they just said script supervisor. They they just supervising it and put piecing it together. So the person that actually wrote this film is actually not even to, it's not even told who wrote this. <laughs> It's not even actually who who told who who's telling who wrote the film. So all you have is a person that probably had a plenty of stories, and they just the supervisor put the story together for them, for for the movie, and they just needed a director with a visual uh, eye to put it all together. Which is Hype Williams, one of the biggest uh, video music video directors uh, in our genre. Or, um, of, I wouldn't just say our genre because we, melanated people or so called black people created all forms of music. But he has one of the best visual eyes or the minds for um, piecing uh, music to uh, to video or uh, putting music to uh, to a visual. That's weird. I've never seen nothing like this before in my life. Usually have a person that says writer of a film. It don't have no writer. All it has is a script supervisor. And a lot of these uh, a lot of these stories in this in this movie. Came from Nas's uh, rhymes. If you listen to his rhymes, you see the you actually see it in the video. I'm like in this movie. I'm like, I kept noticing that. But like, it's, there's no writer. So when I seen that part when that was in the Tommy's house, I know they took that from Tupac. I know they did. There's no way. It's no way possible. How you have a naked woman and then you sit right in front of the naked woman? All right, I got another piece to show y'all then. That's the realest shit. Listen to what he said once more. It was written. Remember, Billy, it was written. He's a he's a ghost writer for the movie. There's no real writer. You when you watch a movie for credits, always see a writer. It was a script supervisor. These are these are motherfuck these are people that when they do a movie, they have to have a, a outline, then they draw it out. When they draw it out, they have frames, they go to on 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 uh on location, and they go location, they, they get the star, get the people they want, the actors together, and they get the actors to act it out on location, and then they start filming. So, that all being said, listen to it again. No, listen to me. God don't like ugly. It was written. Hey, nah. Your whole damn style is bitten. You heard my melody. Bro. Your whole damn style was bitten. You heard my melody. You said you sound like Rock Kim, man. Remember, he used Rock Kim's autobiography on one of his albums, and he had put his daughter in his rhymes. Uh, Rock Kim's daughter in his rhymes. He was upset with him at, at, at for a time. But he, and then I, I saw a recent interview on the Breakfast Club. He said, "I'm not really. I wasn't really mad. I'm not really mad at about about that because he was just showing respect." But people don't realize. Uh, Tupac really looked up to Rakim too. That's why he said he knew he knew all the styles because he he said I can I can if I if any one of them went against me. One of his interviews before he passed, he said any any one of those people I looked up to at Lil Cool J, all of them went up. Any one of them went up against me, I can take them out because I mastered their style and I I use I I, I checked out their style and was able to um, make my style even even greater because I seen what you did, seen what this person did. It made myself even more powerful, and I can crush you just with my mind, and not with just trying to uh, go back and forth with you. Cause I know what you finna do, and just overrun you with what you finna do because I already studied you. So remember that he he knew that Nas was um, pretty much using Rock Him style at one point. This is what 1996. This is after uh, it was written was out because he said it was written. So if the album was already out, he wouldn't have said it was written. Cause remember, it was written. Use a lot of stories in belly. 
about my life in the papers. All my run ins with authorities, felonious capers. Huh? And you wanna live my life? So it's a hostage. Niggas that don't run, run. Right? Seen too many movies. Blow them up again. Seen too many movies. <laughs> Come on, man. He wrote the movie. Come on, man. Come on, 